this is Angela with Infectious Magazine here at Jordan of Dream Theater. How are you? I'm doing well, yeah. You're getting excited? I am so excited. <laughs> <laughs> now, your new album, A Dramatic Turn of Events, was entered into the top ten entry of Billboard charts. Have you noticed a difference in audiences since then? Um, well, you know, I think our last album was also the top ten, which was pretty exciting, so yeah. It's, yeah, it's very cool. The audiences have been, uh, have been great. You know, we're just actually starting this leg. Um, we, haven't been, we haven't done that many shows yet. We've been up in Canada, and now we're doing the, U the U.S. So, um, I don't know, I think tonight is basically sold out, so it, yeah. I think it'll be good. It certainly looks it from outside. Oh, cool, that's awesome. Yeah, it should be great. Do you have any plans to record any shows from this tour for future release? Um, not really, although I wouldn't mind capturing video cameras out at some of the shows and then deciding what we want to do because we're not quite there yet. It's been a lot of work getting this machine off the ground again with the new drummer and I'm sure you'll ask me about those things as well. As but as yeah, <laughs> yeah, cool. And with the upcoming re-release of Live Unicom Blu-ray, are you planning to release any other Dream Theater material in new formats? Um, you know what? I was surprised to, to hear about that. I had heard rumor about that release, and then all of a sudden I looked online just as all you guys did, and I went, oh, okay. So I don't know. I don't know. The Blu-ray thing has not been on my mind, so it's not been part of my you know, focus. And now, how has having my family in the band changed life on the road as well as in the studio? Well, that's an easier question. <laughs> um, okay, first life on the road. Having Mike in the band has been a real pleasure because he's not only a really phenomenal drummer, he's also a really great guy. He's just like, upbeat, he's fun, he's, you know, he likes to chat and tell stories. And so all our hangs on the bus and just all the things we do together as a band have, like, kind of become this really fun time. Yeah. So um, he's changed the dynamic a lot. I mean, I enjoyed the band before, but it's certainly a lot different with Mike in it. He's a great guy, so it's wonderful to have him with us. And then, um, you know, the on the road part is one thing, but in the studio, he's just, you know, this brilliant drummer who just came in and did some great things for the album, played so well, and was easy to work with, and uh, we're all very happy about it. It's pretty cool. And now, also, um, what is happening with any of your side projects right now? Um, well, let's see. Not a whole lot at this very minute um, because we've been so deep into the Dream Theater world. <clears throat> I really want to get a little bit of time because I wrote this piece called Explorations for Keyboard and Orchestra, and I'd like to be able to record it properly with a really good orchestra. So I've had some interesting offers, but I haven't had a whole, had a whole lot of time to like get into it and figure it out. So. Um, yeah, I'll do that when I have a little time. And also, I gotta make another solo album. So I gotta figure that out too. Will it be a piano album? Will it be a rock album? I don't know. I've been very immersed you know, these days getting Dream Theater, making sure that it's you know, as powerful and as together as it can be for the future. But, but you and fans as well, then, will have a lot to look forward to. So you have still a lot to do. Yeah, there's a lot to do. <laughs> totally. And most fans want to see a return of the Evening with the Dream Theater concert. So have you guys thought about doing that again? Um, yes, we've thought about that, but there's nothing to report. Right now we're playing, we feel like we're giving a nice long show. It's about two hours long. It's chock full of notes. <laughs> and uh, hopefully no one will feel disappointed. Right. So. I don't think they will. Okay, good. <laughs> you guys have spoke before about taking bands on tour with you that you really believe in. So I wanted to ask right now, what are a few bands, whether you're touring with them or not, that you think really deserve the right commission. Oh. Well, um, this particular um, matching is really, really pretty cool because, uh, you know, at the moment we're out with Trivium, they're really good players and they're really good guys and they're on the same record label as us. So uh, that kind of thing works really, really well. Um, it's been very smooth drawing with them. Um, you know, like, I have to say that personally, like, metal is not necessarily my personal thing. I like, you know, in, in the Dream Theater world, I'm more about the frog side than the metal side, but then I'm always a keyboard player, so it makes sense. But, um, you know, but I like the idea of having groups that, first of all, are easy to work with and play well, and if they're on the same label, that's great. And I know when we go to Europe next time, we're going to be taking Periphery with us. And they're very, very talented guys. Um, we do some amazing stuff, so I'm happy about that too. Um, and I was very happy when in Israel we had um, Against the Wall, 
valuable lessons that you've learned over that time and how have things evolved between the industry but also just music itself? Um, well that's an interesting question. I mean when I got into the group 13 years ago I was really struck by how um, the group had a very interesting blend of like progressive rock with metal but also with virtuosity thrown in. To me that's what kind of like separated Dream Theater from everybody else was the fact that they could do these stylistic things but also the, the um, the chops, the playing was just like above anything I ever heard in rock. So I think those three elements are elements that are almost like a foundation for dream theater. So whatever do, whatever we do, whatever we change, we kind of go back to that. Personally, I like to throw changes at the band, like you know, the kind of gear that I use. I'm really into using like you know modern, cool equipment. Like I just uh, started to use some of my own like iPhone, iPad, like apps and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that, and um, you know I use interesting controllers, the continuum, and arpeggios, and all this cool stuff. And so I try to throw influences, and also in the kind of sounds that I put into the music. Um, but you know, when it comes to the core of the group, it kind of revolves around this this center, which was the. the the way Dream Theater began. So it's not changed, it's over the years, you know, it's definitely changed. We had different things, we tried different things. You know, recently we experimented with adding some more like really kind of aggressive metal. Now that's kind of come out a bit, back to more of the proggy sound. So there's a lot of influences, but it kind of rotates around this kind of planet, which is the, the frog metal and the chop, the virtuosity. So it's interesting to, to see the way we kind of shift around with that, you know, with that in mind. It's working though. Cool. Cool. And then just anything else you'd like to add? Anything else I'd like to add? Well, I'd like to add that you know, Dream Theater is it's such an interesting place right now. It's such a great place. And every time we go out on stage, I look around and there's so many smiles. I mean, I'm used to people enjoying Dream Theater. It's been a popular band. But now it just seems like people are like just really completely like, you know, excited and happy. and just getting the real hit that things have changed a lot and we're it's kind of like Dream Theater 2.0, <laughs> if you will. You'll see tonight, it's, yeah. it's a really cool thing. Everybody's happy, we're all just kind of really unified. There's a nice nice uh, dynamic going on in the crowd, so. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cool, thank you.